Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating dynamic targeted eyes in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was sponsored by cgtoots.com, the web's best source of CG and digital art tutorials and resources. On the CG Toots website, you can find content and tutorials from all the best artists out there and easily find the information you need. The CG Toots team carefully curates the content so everything is the highest quality and their advanced search features mean you won't need to spend hours searching the web for the help you need. Their site also has some epic features for organizing your favorite tutorials and you can create watch lists, playlists or even your own channels. If you want to stay up to date with the latest tutorials, news, resources, courses and inspirations, you can also sign up for their free weekly newsletter and get all the information you need delivered straight to your inbox. Check out cgtoots.com today and start learning. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. So this tutorial was requested by Arpen Sadukin via our Facebook group, who wanted to know how to create this eyeball following a target animation that was originally done by For Real, a design studio in Germany. And if you haven't seen their work, head over to their Instagram at we are for real and check out their amazing work. There's some really cool and inspiring stuff up there and I'll leave a link down below. And if you wanna request a tutorial, you can get in touch via Facebook, Instagram, or the cgshortcuts.com website. Okay, let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can create this effect. So we've got our eyeball model already imported and you can download this in the project file if you wanna use this guy or you can just make your own model. So the first thing we wanna do is make a whole bunch of these eyes by cloning them into a grid. So we'll make sure we've got our eye selected and we'll head over to the MoGraph objects here. And this is actually the icon we want, the MoGraph cloner. So we'll bring that in while holding the Alt key so it's automatically applied to our eye. And now we've got three eyeballs on top of each other. But if we come down to the object tab of our cloner, we just need to change the mode from linear to grid array. And that's giving us a grid of clones in this direction. But we want these guys going vertically. So we'll bring the countdown to one in the Z direction. And to get them cloning in this direction, we need to add some clones here in the Y direction. So let's take six up that way and six in the X direction as well. And that gives us our wall of eyeballs. But we might just wanna bring these guys a tad closer to each other. And we can do that here in the size section, meaning the size of our grid. So if we bring our X and Y dimensions down to 130 centimeters each, I think that should do nicely. So the next step is to give our eyes something to look at. So one option we could try is right clicking on our cloner and over in the animation tags, we could bring in our old friend, the target tag. And this guy will allow us to set a target object for our eyes to point toward. And you could use any object as your target object, but we're going to use a null object because it's going to allow us to swap in any object we want later on. So if you wanted to, you could bring in a mouse arrow just like the example. Okay, let's bring that guy in. And our null is basically an empty object and it's just represented by a single dot in space, which is a little bit hard to see in the viewport sometimes. So to make our life easier, we can actually change how our null is displayed over here in the display section of our nulls object tab. And you can see it's currently set to dot, but we've got a bunch of other objects in here we can use. So let's get a bit fancy and have our null represented by a star which will hopefully make it a bit easier to see and manipulate. And it's still a little bit small over there, but we can also resize that here. Okay, so now we can see exactly where that null is in our scene. And because this guy is going to be our target, we might as well rename this too, so we don't confuse ourselves later. So now we can grab our target tag and drag our null down here into the target object slot. And that's caused everything to flip up this way because our null is right in the center of our clones. So our targeting is getting a little bit confused. So let's try moving our null and see if our eyes follow. And they kind of do, only the backside of our eyes is pointing toward the target and the eyes are moving as one big group, which we don't really want. So this method is not quite going to work for us. So let's just undo this and we'll try a slightly different approach 
and see if we can get the target tag to affect all the eyes individually. So we might as well delete our target tag and try this again from the start. And we'll also head over to our cloner to the coordinates and we'll just remove that rotation too. So we're back where we started from. So this time, before we start targeting anything, we'll grab our target null and move it in front of our eyes. So they've got something to point to. And rather than applying our target tag to our cloner, let's try applying it to our individual eye itself here. So we'll right click on that guy, animation tags, and grab another target tag. And again, we'll drag our null target object into the target slot here. And now if we try moving our target around, everything stays put, nothing seems to happen. So we could try heading back to our cloner and to the object tab, and we could try disabling the fix clone checkbox, which might give us the result we need and treat all of the eyes individually. So we'll switch that off. And it looks like we've lost our pupils now, but if we spin around here, you can see they're now all pointing away from our target object. And if we grab our null and move it around now, our eyes are starting to react to that individually. So we're getting close, but they're not pointing directly at the target object. They're all just uniformly pointing in the same rough direction to where our star is. And the eyeballs themselves are pointing in the reverse direction. So it's starting to look like the target tag approach might not be the best option to achieve this effect. So let's just undo that. And we'll delete that guy. Rather than using the target tag, the way I'd recommend we go about setting this up is with the use of MoGraph effectors instead, which are going to give us a lot more flexibility and control. So with our cloner selected, we'll head over here to our MoGraph effectors and similar to our target tag, we've actually got a target effector. So let's bring that in. And straight off the bat, that's probably giving us the best results so far. We can see that's affecting all the clones individually and all the eyeballs are pointing away from the very center of our scene, which happens to be right where the target effector is. So if we take a look at this effector, it has some of the same options that our target tag had, including a target object slot. So if we do the same thing here and drag our target null into that, our eyes have shifted slightly to be pointing towards the null instead of the target effector itself. And if we grab this guy and move him around, things are finally starting to work for us. Aside from the fact that our eyeballs are pointing in the opposite direction again. So let's fix that now. Let's just position our eyes so they're parallel with our camera. And to fix the direction they're pointing in, we just need to go to our target effector. And if we look right down here, there's this up vector option, which is going to allow us to tell our effector which way up should be. And we can pick any axis we want, but let's just inherit the up vector from our eye object itself. And that looks to be working now. So we'll grab our null again. And now if we move this around, the eyes follow perfectly. All right, so let's give our target object a bit of random animation. And an easy way to do that is just to right click on our null and back in the animation tags, we can use a vibrate tag. And if we come down to the settings here, we can enable some random movement in our object's position. And we only want movement in the X and Y axis and not back in the Z axis. So let's change our amplitude in both directions to 500 centimeters. And we'll give that a play. And we've got the random movement in there now, but it might be a tad fast. So let's slow it down a bit by bringing the frequency down to one. And before we play that back, let's just add a few more frames to our timeline. And if we double click in this space here, we can fit our timeline slider to that new length. So now we can hit play. And it's starting to look pretty cool, but we can make it look even cooler if you remember from the example from For Real, they've also got their eyes moving away slightly as the target gets closer. So let's add that effect as well. Back over in our target effector, we've got an option down here called Repel. And enabling that is going to repel our clones away from the target as it approaches. But if we play that, you won't notice any difference at first because we actually need to set a distance for our repel effect to be visible. So we'll bring this up and you can see how those eyes are starting to be repelled away from that null. And you could go crazy with this if you want to, but we're just going to keep it fairly subtle. I think about there looks good. And that's working nicely now. 
but there's still one more thing we can do to make this animation look a bit more organic. Let's just pause that and rewind. And we'll grab our cloner again. And we're going to add another MoGraph effector. This time we're going to use a delay effector. And this guy is going to give a natural springy looking motion to our eyes as they move around. So we'll just adjust the strength slightly and we'll change the mode to spring. Let's give that a go. And now we've got this cool springy look going on, which gives our eyeballs a bit more character. And we could even try one of these other modes. Blend is always a good one for giving us a nice smooth motion. And we'll give that a second to calculate. And now we've got those eyes moving around a bit more smoothly. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I think that's just about it for this tutorial. So see what you can create with this setup. You're not just limited to using eyeballs and you can do a lot of cool effects with just the target and delay effectors. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time and you can grab the final render ready project files for all of our tutorials, including this one on our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons. You guys are the best and we couldn't make these tutorials without your support. If you'd like to request a tutorial, post your work for feedback or get help with anything, you can join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash CG shortcuts. That's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.